Hello, good evening, and welcome to this special wrap-up edition of the Hampstead Decides. And the good news is, the election is finally over. Oh. Yeah! Oh. Yes. Oh yeah. Oh dear. Oh, how good is that feeling? The sweetest finish oh. of all. There goes the ABC's budget for the next three years. Look. Yeah. <laughs> Full marks to the Coalition, though, on their win. It was an extraordinary election night. First up, of course, we had Rudd's concession speech, which I think was gracious in part. I thank the good burgers of Griffith for their support. <laughs> look, look, the fair call. No, the burgers in Griffith are good, but I know there's a lot of people who think the burgers are better in Eden Monaro. Right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Seriously, oh, of all the candidates, the one I would have guessed to thank the role of burgers in his life would have been this one. <laughs> It was a bizarre performance by Rudd, and even he knew what he should have done to the speech. Cut, 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 <laughs> and more cuts. Yeah, and at one point in the speech, Rudd even invoked the American president, Barack Obama. It is what others have called the audacity of hope. Or put more simply... Whoa, 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 wait. Rudd found a more simple way to put the phrase audacity of hope? <laughs> Let's hear his pithy abbreviation. Or put more simply, our simple, audacious belief that we can make our community and our country and world a better place for all, not just for some. For all, not just for some. So that, why didn't Obama use that as Good the cover it. of his yeah. book? And then, five, six hours later, Rudd finally said the words all of Australia has been waiting to hear. You won't hear my voice in public affairs of the nation for some time. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least the Labor faithful had something to cheer about. Over at Peter Beattie's election party, they were so down, they were hitting some kind of bong to forget the result. <laughs> Desperate. Yeah. Yeah. Just desperate. <laughs> Look, I think one of the problems that Rudd had this election was that no one really knew what he stood for. And I've got to say, I'm not even sure he knew what his actual job was at times. He seemed to change his profession every week. I don't apologise for being in the vision business. <laughs> I'm in the building business. <laughs> we have been in the business of writing the nation's history. <laughs> Mate, I'm just into the compare and contrast business. Look out, lady. <laughs> Avid by contrast, well, what a night it was for him. And yes. it's been a real journey for him. I mean, remember back in 2009 when he was first elected leader, a lot of eyebrows were raised. And those eyebrows were still there in force on election night. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is a lot of eyebrow. So the question before us now is, what kind of Prime Minister will Tony Abbott make? Yesterday he said, I, I want to be as far as is possible an orthodox Prime Minister. An orthodox Prime Minister, and uh, already we're seeing some early signs of that. <laughs> of course, uh, one of the challenges that he's got now is to fix up the budget mess that Labor left behind, and he knows that that is not going to be easy. Well, there's no magic wand here, Lee. Mm. That is absolutely right, because the new Treasurer, Joe Hockey, has already tried that, and it definitely <laughs> didn't work. <laughs> There's no question, as our Labor warned us, there will be cuts under the new government. So, by way of tribute, let's take a moment to remember those most likely to lose their jobs under an Abbott government. They will be missed. They will be missed. But look, I, uh, I think election 2013 will mostly be remembered for a lot of the surprise results that it tossed up. I mean, I, for one, was shocked Craig Thompson wasn't re-elected. Oh, yeah. I know he had a lot of trouble finding people willing to hand out for him yeah, on polling yeah. stations, so in the end he just had to pay some old friends to do it and uh, <laughs> not cheap by the hour, I can assure you. But look, the biggest surprise of all this election was definitely the Senate. I mean, it just looks like it's going to be full of crazies yeah. now. No wonder the Coalition wants electoral reform. I mean, the Senate is just full of nutters. Check them out. You've got the uh, climate change denier guy, you've got that guy who thinks burkas encourage bank robberies, <laughs> and even a guy who thinks gay marriage leads to bestiality. <laughs> if anything, some of these new micro-parties 
is will bring a bit of sanity mm. back to the Senate. But I, uh, I particularly like the guy... The no, micro laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I like the guy from the motoring enthusiast party. Have you heard about this guy? He, he got to Canberra yesterday and his first point of business was to pimp up his Commonwealth car. Yeah. Well, look at that. <laughs> Ricky Muir is his name and we don't know much about him, but his YouTube channel suggests that he likes to spit sling shit at people and remove people's pants. This, this guy's made for politics, he'll fit in fine. And people keep saying unfairly that he's been avoiding yeah. the media, but he, he did make an appearance on 7.30 the other night. Yeah, yeah, he is. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta say though, I felt very sorry for Heather Hewitt there. I mean, this is not the first time she's had to put up with this kind of thing. In fact, mm. even around it's the 7.30 offices, she cops it all the time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and another person who was miffed by the weird results was Anthony Green on the ABC. He tried to keep his personal opinions in check, but I think eventually tiredness may have got the better of him. 64.8% there for Paul Fletcher. Uh, one of the safest liberal cunt seats in the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's true though. <laughs> I mean, I agree. Very accurate. I mean, Very accurate. I thought Green and, and the ABC uh, had a good night otherwise, though. Although it was a bit controversial that Lee Sales wasn't on the panel. And uh, I think she chose to enjoy the coverage right. instead from home. Uh, having a bit of a redhead girls' night in with Julia Gillard. <laughs> I mean, personally speaking, I, I was sorry that Lee Sales didn't join the coverage. I know a lot of people wanted her to be part of the big night, so we decided to help make that dream come true. Standing by in Melbourne... From right, Lee, come on. It's time to make your big appearance. We'll move on. Um, I, I, think, I think while we wait to see if Bill Shorten's going to be there, because he, he may... I mean, tonight is probably not the night where any... Uh, oh. ..and told his back. Annabelle, let's have one more crack at talking to Bill Shorten. I'm going to ask for uh, forgiveness and you seek permission. Welcome to Election Debrief. With us tonight, we have spokespeople from Labor, Liberal, the Nationals and the Greens. Good evening to you. Good evening. Good evening. If I can start with Labor, where do you feel it all went wrong? Well, obviously, we knew that we were the underdogs oh, in this. That is complete rubbish. This is just the same old Labor speech. The public is sick and tired of it. I didn't it. interrupt you when you said good evening. Please, just one at a time. Is it not true to say Labor was the underdog? <laughs> I think the Labor was the overcats. I think there was a clear frustration on the part of the electorate that your policies and campaigning styles were virtually identical. Would you agree with that? Absolutely not. I think we had a very different vision to offer the Australian people. Well, give it a minute. Sorry. No, you go ahead. The new government takes office, and as the parties regroup, what's the one lesson you'll take from the election? Thank you all for your time. Thank you, Penelope. Welcome to Inside the Wheel, folks, and tonight we're going to look at how the media covered election night. Yeah, look, everyone took a stab at it, from the free-to-air channels to Al Jazeera. Even on the internet, the Sydney Morning Herald and The Age combined their worldwide resources and cutting-edge technology to cover Tony Abbott's big night. <laughs> There's a lot of noise in the earpiece. Fairfax Digital, the future! Yes, uh, look, with such fierce media competition, you can understand why election broadcasts have so many innovations. Yeah, yeah, look, forget those old-fashioned chamber graphics. This year, Channel 7 changed the game by putting their results on a Ferris wheel. Here we go, this right. wheel of power. <laughs> we promised that when... The... It was a win for the Coalition or for Labor, we'd have fireworks and there you go. There you go. <laughs> wow. And what was their reason for this theme park ride graphic? For the same reason I'm now on a coin-operated spaceship? No. <laughs> <laughs> that was quite pointless, wasn't it? Yes, it was pointless, <laughs> yes. Also pointless was Channel 7's Guess Who graphic. I mean, even their own panel didn't know what to make of this. Guess Who is going to lose their seat? Jeff Lyons in Bass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really can't imagine why you'd just print some names on a screen when you can say exactly the same thing with a painfully slow, confusing graphic. No, Andrew, the important thing is how clear this graphic makes it as to who's lost their seat. Guess who's next? 
white. I'm white. That tiny Whoever guy. Was, was God. Yeah. Yeah. Right, but who needs to know the identity of these candidates? Who needs to know? I don't I mean Laurie Oakes knows what, what these losing candidates are good for. They're shark bait. Yeah, yeah. Nine called this the gurgler. <laughs> and as each poly lost, they get fed to the sharks. Well, the graphic guys must have hated Side Bottom and Cheeseman because those two seem to lose their seats over and over again. Since Side Bottom goes in again, he must be sick of it by now. He's had a couple of screams tonight. Yeah, Darren Cheeseman, back into the shark pool, Darren. <laughs> there you go. Well, he doesn't want to get it. He's very reluctant. He's a fighter. These sharks are just again. He keeps coming back. Oh, cheese oh. again. Come here. Seriously, these sharks, they got so sick of eating side bottom and cheesemen, they started eating people who'd actually won their seats, like Warren Snowden. Yeah, although thankfully, Chow Nine did realise their error and they quickly pulled Warren Snowden back out of the tank. See? All better. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, the gurgle is still a better idea than this. <laughs> uh, but the gimmicks didn't end there. One of our exciting innovations this election, we've got a whole bunch of them, is the Udecide touchscreen. Really oh, what an exciting innovation, a touchscreen that works sometimes. <laughs> wow, that will take the 2004 election by storm. <laughs> uh, Adam, Adam, Channel 9 knows that election coverage isn't just about numbers. It's about showing blurry photos of people watching your own program in complete darkness and showing this man with a bucket on his head. <laughs> That's what elections are about. I, I think that man was just ashamed to be in Ross Greenwood's segment. Well, by the time Greenwood was finished, the, pretty much the entire panel was ashamed to be part of Ross Greenwood's segment. Yes, yeah, right. now, look, there's some good news. I've got. Fairfax Digital, they also created some wonderful election memories. Here is the Prime Minister. Pictures of some random guy getting better pictures. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> now, speaking of technology, we, we shouldn't forget the many vital insights that Channel 9's viewers tweeted throughout the coverage. Insights like, If Rudd loses in his own seat, it's over for him. <laughs> Why are Australia so dumb? <laughs> and no fewer than 22 tweets about Amanda Vanstone's shirt. What? No wonder <laughs> this viewer tweeted such high praise. Coverage is a credit to the entire You Decide 9 team behind the scenes. Graphics, directors, producers, reporters. <laughs> I mean, who, who on earth would, would send a tweet like that? Oh, a Channel 9 producer would. <laughs> oh, yes. Well done on impressing yourself. <laughs> Don't forget Fairfax Digital, Andrew. They were on social media as well. Ooh. But that was just because they forgot to switch off their Google Plus message alerts. Which are worth $20 billion in revenue to the Coalition over the forward estimates. <laughs> the Coalition is uh, trying to claim that there will be a Coalition majority. Oh, no, Fairfax. Oh, don't, don't ignore Amanda Ho. She's probably your only viewer. <laughs> Oh. Well, look, we, we can't all be social media wizards like Fairfax, but one thing every election broadcast can have is a panel of opinionated hacks. You don't want too many, though. A maximum of 17 hacks per desk, thank you very much. <laughs> no, that's right. I, I gotta say, I love a fat stack of hacks. Oh, the more talking heads, the better. Right, right. So, so after we paid off all of them, I was interested in the hair on the year. I did three in Australia. Oh, yeah. Where are you? You're a hero. Wow. Wow. Mm. Mm. Yes, <laughs> succinctly put. <laughs> but these hacks do provide fascinating commentary, I find, and when they don't, Sky News has installed an emergency boring pundit failsafe system. I think the margin of this, uh, this change of government is what everyone's interested in, although when you talk to uh, coalition officials and MPs and workers and volunteers, of course... The... <laughs> It was, just, it was a terrible yeah. mistake, you know, letting Chris Kenny talk for that long. Oh, uh, <laughs> I think Chris Kenny does make some excellent points, though, Andrew. Like, for mm. instance, I enjoyed the way it took him almost an hour after Tony Abbott's victory speech to start demanding cuts to the ABC. They need to actually start to question the billion, $1.1 billion they throw to the ABC, for instance. <laughs> you know, I agree. I mean, they, they, they've just got to cut ABC funding. I mean, I mean this, this is a network that broadcasts images of Chris Kenny strangling a dog while having sex with him. Disgusting. Worse still. Worse still. They then handed him over to Channel 9 to feed him to the sharks. Oh. <laughs> ABC. Oh, 
Yes, so you are a terrible network. So juvenile. Very child. I mean, they've got, they've got to Very be cut. They've got to be cut, of course. Mm. Now, the busiest hacks on the night were the lefty hacks, trying desperately to find some ray of hope in their darkest hour. The bloodbath that we were expecting in Sydney isn't happening. It wasn't a bloodbath! The first 100 votes have been counted. That's a small swing to uh, Kate Ellis. A Labor person wasn't totally screwed after 100 votes! The endorsement of the, uh, uh, of the Labor government by The Economist magazine. Labor was endorsed by one overseas magazine! That we have preserved our federal parliamentary Labor Party as a viable fighting force. Labor is viable! We were heading for zero seats in Queensland. That's not going to happen. Labor still exists! I've never seen such a bunch of losers so happy with themselves. <laughs> Slightly pathetic, to be honest. Labor's pathetic! Oh, this is spin. This is true. Oh, it all became too depressing for some lefty hacks. Oh, poor old Hawkey started to run for the hills, but unfortunately for him, Sky News had the foresight to chain him to the desk. <laughs> for the ultimate in election night punditry, you need to turn to Lachlan Harris. Now, this guy just could not go wrong. Wayne Swan lose his seat tonight. Look, I think it's going to be really tough for Wayne. They're absolutely going to wait until the polls close in WA before they do anything. So yeah, the, yeah, the, 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 the polls have closed. Closed. Polls, closed. Polls have been closed for, a, for an hour. Yeah. <laughs> talking about Fairfax here in Fisher, you're confident of a, a win, is that mm. right? No, no, no you're talking, talking about, about Fisher. No, I'm talking about Fisher. I'm talking about No, no, yeah. what, what, what? Mal's what focusing on Fisher. <laughs> Fisher. <laughs> what kind of fool would confuse Clive Palmer's seat of Fairfax with the seat of Fisher? Even if you look at my seat of Fisher. Clive Palmer kind yeah. of fool. Look, OK, Harris made a few slip-ups on the night, but let's face it, there's worse calls you can make. There was a lot of great coverage tonight, but I think the best official was by far the best. <laughs> and I think you are very smart, very funny and very handsome. Oh, no! He's often the best on ground, but it's when the game's over, when you're back in the change rooms, that Tony's real talents come to the fore. <laughs> With Abbott now Prime Minister, many fear a dark new age of persecution. <laughs> Among those at risk, environmentalists, same-sex couples, and Malcolm Turnbull. <laughs> but the group that faces by far the biggest threat are the inner city elites who promised to leave the country if Abbott ever became Prime Minister. <laughs> And already, these so-called cultural refugees are making good on their word. We must go, and quickly! As they seek asylum in more wanker-friendly countries, many will have to leave their loved ones behind. So, sir, you only have enough frequent flyer points for one upgrade to business class. No! 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 <laughs> While others will be forced to endure cramped conditions in unsafe vessels that rarely reach their intended destination. They destroyed all my documents, so it's very hard for me to prove that I'm a genuine elite. They took my get-up card, all my copies of the monthly. Do not despair. I've smuggled something for you. <laughs> Copy of the God Delusion. <laughs> Don't ask how I got it there. But even the successful refugees from Abbott's regime have been met with hostility in their new homes. <laughs> And for some sanctimonious elites, life on the run ultimately proves too difficult to maintain. Stop the truck! I've just got $75,000 paid parentally. My wife's a lawyer. I'm gonna get her pregnant! Shut <laughs> up! Order! Please welcome to Question Time a very special guest, the most elusive candidate of the 2013 election, James Diaz. Man of mystery right there on my TV, campaign absentee there on my TV. Tow, tow, tow the boats gently out to sea, shocking me right out of my brain, shocking me right out of my brain. Who would have thought James Diaz not showing up to an election event? That's bizarre. <laughs> I suppose I get more answers out. Oh, hello. It's James Diaz, ladies and gentlemen. That's all right. I've right. got this. I've got it. It's all right. Welcome, James. Hi, guys. All right. 
Are you willing to answer some questions for us? I'm always happy to answer questions. <laughs> well, in that case, you might not get one in Parliament, so James Diaz, your question time starts now. Is the best way to describe your campaign for the seat of Greenway A, successful, or B, room for improvement? Anything just... Well, I'm happy you asked me that question because... Oh, it's Liberal wait, Party wait, HQ wait. again, sorry. <laughs> wait, I know my six-point plan. I know the points. Oh, come I'm on. Let's start processing. No idea. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Are there any questions for that matter? It would be really dumb to answer that stupid question. In 1972, and the nation was in the mood for change. But in the national tally room, some things never change. Right. Right. You're on. Uh, yes, but look at that. The ABC's election theme music captured the mood. Just not the mood of an election. Which was especially unfortunate as the music was performed live. A Whitland victory there on my TV, dropping me right out of my brain. The eyes of the world were on Australia. So viewers in New Zealand. And Australia couldn't care less. I gather I meant to pass on to you our best wishes for the All Blacks engagement with Wales, whatever that is. The 72 broadcast was a truly national affair. In Melbourne, of course, champagne corks had, uh, corks had been popping. There was even an update from Tasmania for the very first... <laughs> ..and last time. Back to you, Canberra. Right. But in 1972, as always, Canberra was the epicentre of the tension between ABC presenters. Well, I'm wondering if we could throw our camera onto that. Not at the moment. We can't show that. Um, I wonder if you just wouldn't mind making it quite clear when you want them up and right saying there. they're there. But just give, give some direction. Sorry about that. There really, there's nothing we can say about it. After two decades in opposition, Gough Whitlam's victory ended Labor's longest losing streak until the wilderness years after 2013. <laughs> Prime Minister Billy McMahon didn't know whether he was coming or going. No, 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 I... <laughs> but he was going. <laughs> While some Conservatives couldn't comprehend the result, the reason for Labor's victory was perfectly clear. The Labor Party has indicated there'll be a flood of pornography. <laughs> the boring crowds rushed to Mr Whitlam's home, but the ABC's reporter stayed objective and at all times critical of Mr Whitlam's backyard. A totally inadequate suburban backyard. An inadequate suburban backyard. Acute horticultural analysis that was later spun off into the popular lifestyle program Inadequate Backyard Blitz. <laughs> Just about it for tonight, and this is the last show of the series, but we thought we couldn't let election 2013 pass without handing out the Mal Award for the biggest stuff up of the campaign. Yes. It's back. The Mal is back. It's named after Mal Meninga, the man with the distinction of having Australia's shortest ever political career when he ran for parliament in 2001. Let's relive the entirety of that career one more time. I was I guess a public figure, and I was put it on a, as a as on the podium where I was just a person out there making sure that I was. Um, <laughs> I'm, bu I'm buggered. <laughs> That's all right. Ah, ah. Best I mean, launch interview ever. He makes James Diaz look good. <laughs> Now, the, uh, the Mal has become something of a tradition on the Chaser election shows, and it's, over the years, it's had many illustrious winners. You're the winner of the Grand Mal. We're You're not going to hit me with it, no, are you? No, no, no. I'm happy to, to ramble in this award. <laughs> but when it came to picking a winner this year, well, it goes to the man whose second Prime Ministership was not much longer than Mal Meninga's entire career. <laughs> Here I am reporting live from the scrum. Kevin Rose won the Mal Award. Kevin! You won! Congratulations, Kevin. How are you? Rod doesn't care about the award, he only cares about selfies nowadays. 
guys get a selfie, please? Just you mean you mean the mouth? Come on, Kevin. Come with the only thing you win this election. Oh. So what? The only thing he's won all election, and he didn't want to win. And so that brings us to the end of another election. Thanks so much for watching and we wish you well with the new dawn of the Abbott government. Uh, we won't be back until the double dissolution in about two months' time. So until then, <laughs> good night! <laughs>